Excellent. Well, it's super to be here. This is a fantastic panel. They come at this topic from all different perspectives, from a legal perspective, from a founder perspective, from a security advisor perspective. So we've got loads of great insights sitting up here in these chairs. So I'm just going to do a quick intro, and then we're going to start the conversation. To my left, we have John Ansbeck, who's the general counsel for General Data Tech. Right next to him, we've got Sean Lawrence, director of IoT Market Strategy um, at Zively by Log Me In. And then uh, right to his left, we've got Dip Patel, CEO and co-founder of EcoVent. And then at the end, there is Ray Potter. And Ray is the CEO and founder of SafeLogic and an expert on encryption. So I think to start out, we're just going to jump right in on a topic that I find fascinating, which is breaches. So I read an interesting report by um, HP that they had done an analysis of 10 different common IoT technologies for the home and found that 70% of them had security flaws that they could identify. So I think the specter of breach is certainly out there, and I'm curious about to what degree this has already started to be an issue. So maybe, John, we can start with you. Sure, okay. Um, so we were having a discussion a little bit about this, 70% uh, of IoT devices. Um, and you know, I come at it from a little bit different perspective, right? I'm um, just out of curiosity, any of the lawyers in the room, or am I the only one you let in today? That's cool. Okay, so, um, so I come from a very different perspective than most everybody else in the room, I suppose. But this is a, a, a risk issue. And um, you know, these guys and so many of you in the room are, are CEOs and founders and developers. And you come up with these amazing ideas and these, these uh, fascinating solutions. And the part of me absolutely really values that. And I love that idea. And, I, and some of the things we saw this morning, I mean, I, if you don't mind, I retweeted about the soccer ball you can plug a light bulb into, which most of you also did. But then we talk about from the drawing board where you are, um, where, or somebody's in a, a basement where they're writing some OS or a code, and, and, and what's the journey from there to a, um, to a Federal Trade Commission and FTC hearing, uh, where somebody is asking you, well, when you were developing this product, um, why did you decide to use this particular communication protocol, or why did you use this OS? And in most of you, many of you, the answer will be, well, either because Apple told us we had to, or, um, or because it was the cheapest, easiest thing we could do to get to market. And cheapest, easiest is not going to be a great answer to the Federal Trade Commission. So I, and this is, a, to me, in, in the prep, the answer, the beginning of the panel, um, this is not just a channel. as to say a challenge. This is really, literally, a, a market differentiator. And if you can keep risk in mind at the beginning of your journey, um, you are going to be so much better and well-positioned as a provider um, that it really will pay off spades, I think, in the future. That's sort of how I come at it. Right. Do, maybe you can jump in as a um, person making a great technology. His company um, works on technology for the home that will help you uh, monitor your room, well, your house room by room. But you can, you can explain it more carefully. It saves you money, saves you energy. Yeah, so what, what we've made is a system that lets you make any house that has multiple rooms have each room as a different temperature zone. So you can use your phone to set them all differently, and then our system will figure out how to, automatically how to do it. Um, in terms of breaches, what's interesting right. is, you know, when you think of your car, you have a little remote, right, and you hit a button, and it unlocks the car. You're like, cool, but you never think about what happens if somebody hacks that remote, and that's because there's, like, five people accountable for making that remote, right? It's like Mercedes, Honda, right? It's car companies. So when something goes wrong with that remote, the car companies held liable. So they put a lot of time into it. When it comes to a lot of these IoT tech, you know, we're using a lot of modules. Certainly when we started, we were. And every one of these modules represents a new door or window into your house or whatever it is. And no one's really held accountable for locking that stuff up because no one's really paying attention to it. Right? A lot of the investors I run into talk about how quickly can you get it out, how cheap is it going to be, what standards are you using. Right? Security doesn't come up, not, not often, and so it's not first and foremost. So just think of it that way. Every single connected device is now a new window or door. Right? And you go to bed and you check the front door, right? but what about everything else in your house? And that's, that's, how, that's how I would think about it. So, yeah, right. Oh, I think just, just on the concept of, of breaches and security, I mean, 
when you think about security, you have to think of a concept called defense in depth, right? So there's, there's no one silver bullet to protect everything. And especially as Ev mentioned, yeah, you, we're, we're stitching a whole bunch of stuff together that introduces a lot of different, um, you know, attack vectors and, 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 and threats, right? So, you know, as, as big a proponent as I am for encryption, you know, that's not the end all and be all for security, right? Because um, there's different attack vectors like, you know, identity uh, hacks and, and just different ways into the platform, to the system, to the end device, to the protocol that um, really have to be considered. And I think that's going to be the challenge as we start to roll out more IoT solutions is it's not as confined of an ecosystem as, say, mobile is, right? So for mobile, you've got iOS and Android and maybe, like, a dozen Windows phones out there, right? So, so the, 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 the landscape is, is much simpler, and, and mobile had a hell of a time trying to um, settle the security issue, right? So um, just real quick, I mean, for, for mobile, it kind of focused on the device first, then the application, and then finally the data, which is where it should have been focused all along. So you know, what I'm hoping with, with you know, the IoT movement is that we start to look at the data first and kind of filter up, right, and try to figure out, you know, What's the value of the data? Where does it flow? Where is it stored? Who has access? And, and, and hopefully that will reduce some of the, uh, the breaches that we'll see. So, Sean, you work with lots of different companies, and you see a lot of what people are doing in this front. What are the things that are concerning you? I, I think Ray gets right at the point, which is identity. Um, this is something I've been harping on a lot, and it's something that, you know, Zively is really... Um, having talked to a lot of people making uh, connected products, one of the things they don't really address is the security aspect, but the biggest issue there is identity. Because suddenly you have a connected um, garage door opener, and, <laughs> and who needs asset, access to it? You know, there might have been somebody who comes and installs it, but then the landlord has some rights to access it if you're renting. And then you have somebody who's visiting for the weekend. You have all these different people. You have a repair technician. How do you handle identity in an IoT ecosystem where suddenly lots of different IoT products, different applications, and people all need to access it in different ways? And so I think handling that complexity is at the center of uh, security. Right. And we talked about the fact that there haven't been, there have been a few, but not a lot of high profile breaches. I think the panel. I think everybody agreed that that's more about just the fact that maybe the bad guys haven't focused on this as a focus yet, as opposed to any indication that there aren't security issues coming into play. So I'd love, since we've got John on the panel, to talk a little bit about what he sees in terms of standards coming in on this and, um, and regulation. Well, so... Actually, the last uh, week, week and a half. I mean, how many of you saw the the news about um, how many of you saw the news about Google's new um, IoT iOS? Okay, so Google has now announced that they're going to do an Internet of Things um, uh, operating system called Brillo. Brillo. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Huawei has a, an iOS um, an, an OS for IoT um, called uh, Light OS. This is in the last ten days. Um, this, you start to see literally now, these are, when I refer to them, it's called standards wars, where everybody wants to be the OS, everybody wants to be the platform. You know, are you going to use, uh, there's a fight going on versus Bluetooth versus Zigbee versus Z-Wave. These, um, these are technical uh, standards wars. Then uh, in the background, you have um, standards making bodies that are all jockeying for position to sort of set the rules in this space. So you've heard some of them this morning, the Industrial Internet Consortium, that's the IIC. Um, the, by the way, being in tech, am I the only person that hates acronyms? Because it's very <laughs> annoying and very difficult for yes, me. Yes, you are the only one. <laughs> okay, that seems fair enough. There's the, I mean, the All Seen Alliance, which has All Join as their platform. There's, um, gosh, the Online Trust Alliance, which has Thread. OTA. There's Thread, of course. There's uh, the Open Internet Consortium. Um, everybody, these are all standards-making bodies that are out trying to make the rules, um, which is really, how are you supposed to make rules when something is moving past you. Um, and so what's really happening right now is, is that all of you and people like you are out there innovating and creating these amazing IoT devices, um, which were estimated to be anywhere between 50 and 100 billion by 2020, so which is just on our doorstep. All these devices uh, that need to be interoperable, uh, they need to be safe, they need to be secure, and we don't even, we're not even in the space yet in 2015 where we have the rules written for all that. 
Um, so it's a, it's a very difficult landscape. And if you come at it for me, and I'm, I'm, you know, think of me in your space as the guardian. I'm the guy that helps to guard what you create. Uh, and, and so my, my pitch to you would be to have a guardian in your, in your world sooner rather than later. Because when you're making the decisions about should we use, should, should we use a Brillo or should we uh, um, be thread compatible or is it Zigbee or... When you're making those decisions, those may be decisions you make quickly now, but they are long-term decisions. So have a guardian in your world that will help you so that you, know, you can be forward-thinking. You can, you can at least look at security, have that discussion, uh, and get to market at the same time. So Dip, you, we talked a little bit about how important this is for your company and what discussions you've had in-house. I think that could be interesting for the audience to hear a little bit about. So just a little bit of context. I come from Lockheed Martin, worked on a lot of defense technologies, um, a lot that were deployed overseas as well. And let me, let me give you a little example. I found a chip once that had a one microsecond delay in a buffer that shouldn't have been there. And I started freaking out a little bit, right? So I sent it away to get it scanned and looked at, and they decapsulated and found out it was a counterfeit chip. And this chip had been in our warehouses, and the vendor that was testing it was counterfeit, too. Um, I bring this up because we're buying modules for 50 cents or a dollar because they're cheap, right? We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know where they're sourced from. I would argue um, that if there are big breaches, the bad guys that are looking at this, we haven't even detected it yet. Like, these are little things that are just sitting there, like root kits. And they're not live yet, but they're there, and they're waiting because we don't know where any of this stuff is sourced. You know what I mean? It's just coming from whoever wants to make it. And all of these factories all over the world are pumping out modules right now, right? And they're getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and we're integrating it. And so at our company, security from the ground up has been a paramount focus because we're about to go into homes and have enough sensors in a home to really quantify it in a way that's never been done before. And that stuff has to be so secure. And in terms of identity, our system has to still operate when the, when the cloud goes away, right? And uh, how do you keep everything secure without internet, which is another that's, whole that's, problem. That's a massive <laughs> ball of wax there. Uh, but I would also say what DIP is doing with EcoVent is unheard of. You know, we, we talk to a lot of connected product companies, and most of them, you know, to DIP's point, they're trying to do quick, fast, cheap to get to CES in time. You know, whereas thinking about security and design from the ground up is very, um, very rare, and it yeah. needs to not be so rare. It can be quick, too. If you get the right people in the room to help you early, this stuff isn't impossible. It's just one different module here, one different chip. Like, little things can make such a difference, and that speaks to your layered approach. Yeah, and I think just a little bit of effort is enough to thwart an attacker and have them move on to something else, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So on the concept of connected home, how many people have a Nest here? Awesome. You all love it? Totally insecure, by the way. <laughs> so um, so I, did a, I did a talk Someone at tweeted. RSA conference with a security researcher in Florida whose team basically hacked and rooted the nest. He got in. He could see passwords. He could see all your traffic. He could see all that, which is incidentally why Google bought Nest, by the way. They didn't buy it just because it's a cool thermostat. Data they bought it because it sits on the network and reads traffic, which Google's going to then take and use it to pump ads your way, right? But the reason I bring that up is because, yeah, you're exactly right. Not many people from a connected home perspective think about security from the beginning, which is awesome that this guy is. What about uh, just a terminology, security versus privacy? Sean, you pointed out a lot. That gets conflated a lot and probably confuses these conversations. It it definitely does. So, I mean, when you think security, uh, you know, it's, it's more about how do you make sure that the data coming off the pipeline, you know, from the device to the cloud to the application on a mesh network, making sure that data gets to the right person at the right time in the right way. Now, privacy is something that handles, you know, something for the user of that device. So that's something that says, and this is something I've been, I haven't actually talked about this publicly, but um, I want to create, and anybody please retweet this, um, I want to create a nutrition label for the IoT. I basically want to say, okay, you have a connected product. Slap it on your product that says, look, this is the sensors that I am collecting. This is how I'm using it. And this is what I'm going to get the data from. I think the more transparent people are in the IoT, the more they'll actually, ironically, adapt it. So I think that's the privacy side is on the user. Right. The consumer fear will be alleviated by that. 
Cool. So where is Phil Donahue? I'd love to get some questions going from the audience. Is there anybody out there who has something they want to ask? Oh, there's one back here on the right. So I guess this is for uh, EcoVent. Um, so who do you trust in terms of where you get your chips from for your product, right? There are a lot of a lot of these products, and retailers, for example, will have a lot of difficulties in figuring out which ones are the safest to use. Um, they can read all the media they want, but there's still a lot of hype. So when I when someone or I interview someone about their product. What kinds of questions should I be asking about the kind of technology? Yeah, great question. Supply chain is everything, man. So, like, we use Future Electronics. If you guys don't know, it's like a privately held huge electronics distributor. Um, we picked them because they took security very seriously. And uh, when I asked them questions about security, about where they buy their parts, where these chips are coming from, they had satisfactory answers for me. Um, I think it really comes down to how much do I trust my team? Right? And I trust them implicitly. And then who do they trust? Right? And the trick is the whole value chain has to be a layer of trust. Right? From, the, from the place you're buying the chip to who's warehousing it. Right? Now, in the, again, this, is, this might seem like paranoia to you guys. But remember, the home has never been quantified before. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, ever. And so it's going to be, it's going to be an area of focus, if it isn't already, for a lot of nefarious people. And so you, have to, you just have to know that the company you're buying the chip from, it might be 20% cheaper somewhere else from some guy who's just like, hey, you know, I can get your chips. But there's a reason Future Electronics, there's a reason Avnet, there's a reason these companies are the ones that Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, you know, NASA uses. So I would say you want to you follow, you follow, the, follow the lead here, right? And it comes from the DOD and from the military. It really does. And the beauty is that information's out there. And does that mean it's more expensive? Not necessarily. It just it, everything is expensive in a startup. What it is is how, when do you put what resources when and who do you have on your team, right? This guardian, it's such an important thing. So ask mentors. I mean, in Boston especially, there's people here that on a cold call will pick up the phone and help you guys. I'm one of them. Call me anytime you guys want. So the thing is, this community here has to get together. It can't just be EcoVent versus blank versus Y, right? It can't be Zively versus, like, Convey. It has to be... We have to remember the bigger ecosystem here. We can't create this platform war that Google and Apple and all these other guys are fighting with security, Mm -hmm. right? The mission has to be security. Like, it doesn't matter how we get there. And I think that's what you get in the military because at the end of the day, when that's not secure, people die. And that mission is kind of important enough that people put away a lot of the petty crap that you have to deal with. With us, we ask for advice. We showed people our architecture. We didn't ask for NDAs because at the end of the day, if we can't make it secure, we're, we're done. We're sunk. You know? can, I, can I just add something real quick to that? There's a really good question about how can you be, how can you be sure you're getting the, you know, the most secure chips. But remember, your job is not to be sure you're right. Your job is to at least be sure you had a process in place that checked on the questions. Yep. Um, you're not going to be right all the time. And nobody in this room is going to build a 100% secure. I mean, you're the encryption guy, but my understanding is let me know when you guys get it all right and everything can be secure. That'd be great. But you're pro- at least you want to be in a position to say early on, you know, if, if this failed or we got a fraudulent chip, somebody put one over on us. But we had a, pro- we had a process in place mm-hmm. from the beginning that asked this question or we had a criteria for fulfilling this particular supply chain requirement. I mean, you don't want to be in that room at that point answering those questions that say, well, you know, Bill um, went out and, and made a few calls and, and that was the best bid. Um, that's just not the place to be. Yeah, and at Zively, we work on something called the Stride model through Microsoft. So we're actually the first to apply something like Stride to the Internet of Things to basically say, check, 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 and see how secure your device is through all those kind of different kind of provisioning flows and process of a lifetime of a product. So those are really important to take those models and threat models and apply them to the Internet of Things. Mm-hmm.